is your advice, should most people try and carve out their own category? Like, what, what are your thoughts on that? Like, should, you know, yeah. should most people just kind of go with it the way they're doing and, you know, here's the market, here's the product or how much value is there in, in, in carving out your own category? I think that you have this chapter in the book where you talk about, you know, if category creation doesn't really apply to you, if you're a big company or yeah. if you're a startup like already that is kind of a little bit established in a space, should you try and differentiate and create a new category or should, or is this like only for certain instances or can anyone do it? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I told myself if I ever wrote a sequel to the book, it would be called don't create a category. Um, and, and the reason is, uh, I say that in jest a little bit, or maybe a little quick date <laughs> in the book, but, um, I think the core idea is, um, some people just like, like our earlier conversation, like you have to do it. Like there's, that's, that's sort of the problem that you've identified and, and, and your only chance of survival is to get other people to believe in, in the problem and how you see it. So category creation wasn't a choice for Gainside. It was, it was existentially, you know, what we had to do, um, but for uh, the, the important piece is that the underlying mechanics of how to do it are the same as to whether or not you're disrupting a company uh, 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 existing category or um, creating a new one. And that's where brand is, is so powerful, because ultimately, if you're um, an existing company that's operating in a very crowded space, the, the core idea is how do we differentiate? How do we stand out and how do we gain market share? Um, if you're a startup, Starting into a crowded space, I think I see a comment here about WebEx and, and maybe Zoom is the perfect example of this. Mm -hmm. Zoom was like the 105th video conferencing tool, right? But they killed it, right? With a great product um, and took this kind of different position. So uh, being able to uh, articulate a problem set in a new way to build a community that speaks it back to you and validates that, um, uh, that pain and then you owning kind of the oxygen around that pain, that's something that matters whether you're creating category or not. I will say that for those that do want to create the category, the reason I say don't do it is that it's a long road. Um, and in a lot of cases, it's expensive, um, meaning a lot of budget to do, you know, our first three months to do a, a conference for 300 people was kind of insane. And you need a lot of belief at the business and at the board that this is a, a long game that's worth investing in. Um, we had a lot of conviction at Gainsight. And I think over time we saw enough signal that said we were, we were right and we just had to keep going. Um, but it takes, I think, a certain type of profile uh, of a person, a human to want to do this. Um, mm -hmm. But to companies that are able to create a category and then go on and dominate it, that's, we've seen a lot of data that suggests um, that there's, um, you know, higher, a higher proportion of market share relative to their peer set um, and higher valuation attributed to those those businesses. Um, so we know that there's a monetary uh, uh, component to to doing it. But again, it's 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 a hard road. If you have a if you have a mar uh, if you have a product in a, in a market that's obvious and a potential buyer, like go for it. But I'd say brand is still going to be your um, uh, the wind kind of behind that that powers your sale moving forward.